Hi and welcome everybody for the part two of revision lecture seven. So here we are going to talk about entirely about the prose and the poetries. That is, it will be a quick revision about each and every topic which we are going to have in our board examination. So let's start with the thee story. So here we have a quick summary of the thee story, which deals with how a small uh, boy of age of the age fifteen, who was misled, okay, and once upon a time there was a uh, there was a phase where he was completely uh, lost because of. Uh, the opportunities that he couldn't get to rob anyone and fulfill his hunger. And that's the reason why one day, when he notices a young boy, a young man, rather I would say, um, of the age 25, named Anil, he decides to rob him. But in turn, Anil turns out to be a very smart person and only because of that he takes him home and changes him for good. So Anil is the main character here, the protagonist who has uh, been, uh, you know, who has played the role of changing the personality and mindset of Hari, who is the thief. So this story is all about how a thief, right from the negative version, changes to a good one. Now in the textbook, when it comes to any chapter, we have personal response questions, which you can make or, uh, you know, practice in order to make it, make this entire concept stronger. So in the textbook, these are the questions. Uh, in every chapter, the questions are given at the back of the chapter, behind the chapter, right? So this rule applies for every chapter and the poetry. Now, many of us are confused whether how to improvise our personal response questions because these are no doubt two marks question, but they carry the entire weightage. The rest of the things can be managed, but when it comes to personal response questions, we tend to fall short of words. So behind every chapter, here we have Quotes, which I have placed for you, so that in order, uh, so that it can uh, become easier and interesting for the reader when it comes to reading the quotes in your answers. So you can use these quotes with every personal response question or wherever suitable. Now, how to write a personal response question? So let's say here we have a question related to the story, which is. Why did Anil employ Hari as a cook, although he could not afford to pay him? So in this case, because it carries two marks, we can say three to four sentences are necessary in order to fulfill the two mark question. That is personal response question. So three to four sentences are enough to create an impact on the reader. Now, in addition to this, you can also use the quotes which are provided to you. Moving on with another thing, how to practice the personal response questions. So I have picked up few important questions for you. So these are the hand-picked ones. No doubt we can, uh, these questions are subjective. It all depends on the reader, how he creates and what amount of questions and what kind of personal response questions he creates. But these questions, according to me, are really important and they can help you to practice the personal response in any chapter. So for the story, these are your personal important questions. Let's go on to Joan of Arc. When it comes to Joan of Arc, so once again, we have a friend story coming up. Um, last year, we had a friend story related to Mutthild. So even now, this year, we have another friend story coming up that is Joan of Arc. So here, it's completely a historical chapter where we know how a young girl, a young maiden that is barely 
17 to 18 years old girl who was chosen by gods and the goddesses in those times in order to free the entire nation that is france which was dominated by england there was a 100 years war which was fought in this and in the span of 100 years joan of arc or jean d'arc she came in the end of the uh, war in order to encourage everybody over there and that's how they won the war now we don't have the entire chapter over here rather a small part of it right which is taken an extract which is taken from the whole play right which is written so which part was taken over here was how joan of arc goes on to um goes on talking to robert who is the french general of the army in order to take the permission to go off to france or to um shino in order to fight against the english here we continue with the story and once again we are here with the quotes which can be used for personal response questions all battles are first won or lost in the mind which is uh, a personal quote by joan of arc and here we have another one which you can use it moving on to how to write a personal response questions related to this particular chapter so here we have an example wherein we deal with the question how important is it for a soldier to stay courageous in the face of a challenging situation so this kind of question can be asked when it comes to any historical chapter like joan of arc so how do we write it so here we have it is extremely important for a soldier to stay courageous even in the face of a challenging situation as he has the responsibility of setting an example for his men and being an inspiration to them if he loses courage then his fellow soldiers who anchor upon him would also get frightened and lose focus of the mission so once again 3 to 4 sentences are enough for you to create any personal response question moving on with some important personal response questions which can be helpful to practice so here we have so i hope that these questions are going to be a very good help for you to practice and now we are moving on with another chapter that is the alchemy of nature i am sure that this quick look at all these chapters which is a revision of all of them is going to help you in near future now moving on with this particular topic that is alchemy of nature so we have learned that how it was believed in india that there was a stone named parasmani wherein whatever it touches turns out to be gold now arabs were always uh, curious to know that what was so special about the stone which is turning each and everything into gold and if we acquire the methodology to create one we can have endless gold around the world in short there was a tinge of greed which was uh, created or developed because of the magic of nature that is what is what we call as the alchemy now this particular topic we can consider this as a travel log of raksha bharadia who has um, with different examples tried to convey a message that how nature is the best teacher for us and we simply need to keep our eyes open and our ears open in order to listen carefully and observe carefully what is happening around us and we can find that how magical this nature is and how inspiring this nature is so here we have the poetry that is the ogress of innocence so these are the verses of ogress of innocence from by william blake that is to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower 
hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour which says that how even the simplest or smallest of material that is the grain of sand can give you an experience of how deeper the world is the universe is the life is when we look into that smaller grain we realize how we have even the smallest of atoms situated inside that there is another world inside the grain if you look at the flower that blooms so beautifully and uh, uh, with that uh, full splendor we can experience the heaven on earth it is believed that we we hold the infinity in our hand which means all our karmas all our actions all our deeds are dependent on what we do and all our the entire destiny is what we can control if we decide to believe in ourselves so what we do now is going to decide our next hour and that's uh, that is what it means by saying an eternity in an hour so let's go check what kind of questions that you can get in the alchemy of nature so here we have that is why does the writer begin by quoting the lines from william blake's poem ogres of innocence so the writer begins by quoting the lines from william blake's poem ogres of innocence to set the mood for the message that follows in the lesson she wishes to convey that we can find a whole lot of meaning and revelation in the smallest of things in nature nature is ready to teach only if we are willing to learn which is a very good message given by raksha bharatiya so here we come with one of the important questions that i found was really important to practice and which can give you a whole lot of uh, a whole and soul practice for this entire topic is this impossible itself says i am possible so do you agree well justify your answer by citing something that you have experienced or heard from someone so it is all the personal response questions so it all depends how you write it moving on with another topic that is the three questions it's a very interesting story wherein the king once upon a time had laid a question in front of his subjects that is the three questions that he wanted to know that is what was the most which was the most important time who were the most important people and what was the most important occupation to do he wanted an answer from the best ones over there and that's why he had laid a question in these three questions in front of his subjects unfortunately no one could answer the questions or no one could answer them satisfy uh, you know uh, that could satisfy his questions or his doubts then he decided to visit a hermit who used to stay in a nearby forest he then decides to visit him and get all the answers for his questions which in turn turns out to be a lesson for him when he visits there that is the day when he goes on to meet the hermit he was attacked by a stranger who happens to be taking a revenge of his brother's death and that's when unfortunately he was wounded by the king's guard now because he was wounded by the king's guard when the king notices him wounded completely he doesn't bother about how he came here for what reason he had come there and who was he rather the very first thing that he did was to help him clean his wounds and then help him survive these acts of king gave him an answer that the right time the most important time was now that is how you react now that is in the current situation the most important person was the one who was wounded in front of him 
and so that was that person was the one who was really important at that point of time and to do good to that person was the most important thing and in this manner when the king helped him revive the enmity in the stranger changed to friendship so this is how we deal with three questions so here we have another quote which you can uh, use when it comes to personal response questions moving on what type of questions can be asked in three questions so here we have that is what is the right time according to you what is the right place uh, or person according to you or what according to you is the right occupation and so on which are completely textual so this is how you are supposed to answer them and now we are moving on with some important questions here that is these are the three questions which according to me are the hand picked one and plus they can be helpful to you when it comes to practicing for quotes you can also try using these quotes which i have provided in your answers so that you get a clear idea of how to use it in your actual examinations so time to go ahead with another topic that is connecting the dots connecting the dots is completely related to one of the most celebrated uh persons on the planet on earth and that is steve jobs we all know what steve jobs is for or rather was for and definitely he is the ceo and co-founder of the apple incorporate that is all the iphones the ipads all the phones that we are all well uh, you know well aware of right so this is entirely a speech which he had given in front of the graduate students where he ended up narrating the three stories which could inspire them to work and that is the first story was all about how he dropped out of a college and followed his heart or his intuitions and ended up becoming an owner of a computer company which he created that is macintosh that is in short we call it mac his second story is all about how he was fired from his own company but at the same time he also learned and realized that he loved creating and that's how he came up with two new companies that is pixar and next plus he also found his love of his life and that is his wife lauren whom later on he got married then he discussed about his third story with in which he had a near death experience he was diagnosed with a rare a rare disease that is pancreatic cancer only by listening to the name of it one can gauge from it that how we can at that moment experience death imagine the entire day he was going through only one thought and that is now i'm going to die i have a limited time with me and now in the, in my lifetime i have never given time to my family and so he realized how time was limited in everyone's life and how your loved ones are really important and you should never forget to give time to them no no matter it doesn't matter how busy are you in your life never forget to give your time to your family that is your loved ones so in this manner he followed all the three stories and kept in front of the graduate students so this is how he shared how the dots that is your past connects every time you work on them every time you follow your intuitions here are three quotes which you can use when it comes to personal response questions time to go ahead with the question what kind of questions can be asked in connecting the dots so here we have what do you learn from the first story so this is how you can answer them that is through this extract i have learned that whatever we learn in our lifetime always comes to use sometime in our future life no learning goes to waste so we should learn whatever we can whenever we can 
which is obviously a fact. Moving on with another topic that is Let's March. When it comes to Let's March, it is completely a, a social and emotional chapter wherein it displays how the reality, the, or rather I would say it displays the reality of children on our on our planet, right? Kaila Satyarthi and Malala Yousafzai, who are the two protagonists in this entire chapter, are given Nobel Prize for their greatest deeds, right? Now, what was their greater de uh, great deeds that they have committed here is Kaila Satyarthi is still working on the child labor wherein he's trying to rescue as many children as possible who are the victims of child labor. On the other hand, Malala Yousafzai is working on the rights of women towards their education, isn't it? So in this manner, we are working on the two uh, protagonists who have worked really hard, especially Kaila Satyarthi towards the child labor. So this is a topic on how we can improvise the situation and how, what step we are supposed to take today in order to safeguard our future. Moving on with the quote. So here we have a hand-picked quote for you, which you can use it in your personal response. Moving on with what type of question you can face in your examination. So here we have. Sri Satyarthi is working for emancipating children. Do you know any other personalities who have worked in the same line? Now, this particular question requires memorizing the names since we cannot put any imaginary names over here. So these are the two names that you must know. That is Malala Yousafzai and Mr. Shantanu Mishra, who is a co-founder of Smile Foundation. So I hope that these types of questions are really helping you to understand how personal response questions can be written. Moving on with some important personal response questions towards Let's March. So here we have. Moving on with the next one. So in this chapter, Night of Night I Met Einstein, we have a very good story about how the author was invited for the dinner party as well as the concert of, which was arranged and organized by none but a well-known celebrity and a scientist, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was known for uh, not only for his experiments or science or physics, but he was also known for his violin and love for music, and that is classical music. One of them is Bach music, which we have in this entire chapter. So what is so special in this chapter? That how the author was invited for the concert as well as for the dinner, and then in the middle of the uh, concert, Einstein notices that his neighbor or the person sitting beside him, that is Jerome Weedman, the very narrator of this entire story, is least interested in the Bach music. Now, Einstein was completely curious to know that what was so interesting about uh, this person, that why wasn't he interested in the Bach music since he has come here. So Einstein decides to know him. Upon uh, getting to know that person, Einstein realizes that he had no knowledge about Bach music, as well as there was no proper guidance given to him about classical music or the perspective which was required to look at it. And that's when Albert Einstein takes the narrator that is Jerome Weidman to his hall and teaches him or guides him how to look at the classical music. 
with the help of different examples such as mathematics and by getting to know his choices that is the narrator's choices the narrator had a belief that he was a tone deaf but einstein proves him wrong that he was not at all a tone deaf rather he he was not aware of the classical music and the beauty of it and that's when upon teaching him the correct way to look at this classical music the narrator started loving the bach music even more and every time after that day when he heard that music he always appreciated it and that's why einstein ended up commenting the last line that is opening up yet another fragment of the frontiers of beauty which means every person has a capability in them or in him but one must learn how to unlock it and einstein helped unlock the frontier of beauty that is unlocking the capability to understand the bach music so this was all about the night i met einstein moving on with the quote which can be helpful for your personal response question so this is an amazing one which is once you stop learning you start dying which is the truth so after this wonderful quote we are now moving on to what type of question can be asked in the night i met einstein so here we have as far as listening is concerned what difference do you notice between the writer and the einstein and the given answer is the way in which you are supposed to write it moving on with the next one that is here we have once again hand picked personal response questions for you to practice let's go on to another interesting chapter that is stephen hawking when it comes to stephen hawking we have learned about how a physicist and a cosmologist that is the one who studies um the universe who is a cosmos right which is a cosmos so cosmology is the study of universe now stephen hawking being a physicist and a cosmologist wanted to find out when the universe began and in which place did it begin but eventually he couldn't find out the answers for them but the good side is he could find out one answer that is how it started so it was stephen hawking's belief that universe is not created by god rather it is created by a universal a uh, force that is gravity right so um with the help of his theory he has laid lot many theories and uh, in front of us when it comes to science and the origin of the universe which is what we call as holy grail another sad part about this was that he was suffering from a very rare disease that is ALS that is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis wherein in this disease your entire body stops working because the brain stops sending messages to your muscles and your nerves so it's all it's also a gradual paralysis you can consider it right generally a person dies in 2 and 1/2 years whoever is suffering from this disease now the best part the miraculous part was that he survived for more than 2 and 1/2 years and went on to live for more than 50 years so here we have the code for the prq moving on with what type of question can be asked so um since the chapter is considered as a slightly controversial chapter where it comes to belief on the god and the science so this kind of questions can be asked to you that is do you think god has created the universe if yes why if no why so in this manner in this case um use words like according to me or 
in my opinion or i believe that so and so so you can use these phrases in order to not to add any uh, not to touch any sensitive part in this answer since it is a controversial question some hand picked questions for you once again so here we are moving on with another concept or the chapter that is unbeatable supermom medicom which was once again a very interesting chapter when it comes to a biography right there are very few people who tend to inspire our country so medicom is one of them and we all know she is one of the leading boxers women boxer in india so this is all about how she has won six world champions uh, championships one after the other without losing any of them and that's why she was nicknamed magnificent mary right a girl from manipur right from the com tribe ended up competing not only in the 49 kg 48 kg flyweight category but also in the 51 kg flyweight category wherein she ended up winning bronze medal in the 2012 summer olympics post that an interview was taken and in which she ended up answering lot many interesting questions about her so one of the questions which can be asked to you is about her life or what would you um like to become in your near future or they can also ask you what if you were a boxer what would you do in her place so anyway we are going to get back to that but here we have the quotes which are placed in front of you for your prq moving on with the next one so here we have the kind of question that can be asked when it comes to mericom so it is naturally about nutrition and athletics wherein they want to they will want to know that how it is important to maintain the diet when it comes to a sports person or sport being in a sport so this is a way you are supposed to answer that it has to be a well balanced diet no matter you eat before your workout or activity during the workout or activity or after the physical activity or workout so it has to be well balanced some important questions for your for this chapter so here we go moving on with another chapter that is the concert once again a very emotional chapter which has a very pleasing start but it turns out to be a very emotional ending or the conclusion it is all about a boy named anand who is completely um fond of music especially the classical music and the concert of ravi shankar pandit ravi shankar and ustad alarakha these were the two legends back then when it comes to concerts and music anand was a very great uh, fan of these two people when it comes to concert and music he always had a dream to attend the concert of these two legends yet the situations are not as good as we imagine or they are not they do not give justice to everybody as we all know so unfortunately he was diagnosed with cancer and only because of that his entire life he couldn't attend any concert his all the all those all his dreams and all his ways of attending and becoming a star were vanished or were shattered now one morning his sister that is smita unknowingly announces 
uh, the report or article which was there in the newspaper which said about the concert of Pandit Ravi Shankar and Ustad Allah Rakha. Upon listening to that, Anand couldn't control his desire to attend that concert. But we all know when it comes to the cancer, the disease, it is not as easy as to deal with it. He was completely bedridden because of that. So on his behalf, his sister attends the concert and in return for the mistake that she has committed, she decides to give him a small gift as a compensation. And that is after the concert got ended, she goes onto the stage and requested she goes onto the stage and requests the two people, that is Pandit Ravishankar and Ustad Alarka, to come down to Aunt Sushila's place and play for Anand. And not to forget, look at the humility of these two men. They decided to scrap out their created schedule and took out some time for him and decided to play for him. Since the last wish of Anand was fulfilled, while listening to that music, unfortunately, he died. So that was all about the concert. So here we have the quotes which can be helpful for you when it comes to personal response questions, or they can also work as a lesson for you when it comes to your life. Here we go with the kind of question that can be asked in this particular chapter that is the concert is now was the time. What was the time? What was she planning to do? Now we, we should know that who is she in this entire question and that is Smita. So this is the way we are supposed to answer the question in three to four sentences. That is how she goes onto the stage and requested the musicians to come and play for his her brother Anand. And how she uh, narrated the story of how he longed for them to hear. Moving on with some handpicked questions for you. Here we go. Moving on with another chapter, which is a humorous one, and that is the luncheon. Now, what was so special about this particular topic was it works on the principle named karma. We have all known about it. What you do comes back around, isn't it? So once the author was invited by his fan at one of the expensive restaurants, right? in France. And that's why upon reaching there, he was completely looted because the fan, that is the women who had invited him, kept on ordering expensive dishes one after the other. And that's how the amount of money that was left with him was nothing. And by the end of that lunch, he had to walk all the way back home because he had no money to pay for the ride or any cab or an auto. After 20 years, when they meet again, well, that was an interesting bark, isn't it? Please excuse me for the background noise. Here we continue with our lecture. So we know that when they meet after 20 years, when he notices her again, he realizes how the law of karma has worked upon her. And that is, she ended up weighing more than 130 kgs. Isn't that interesting? So this was an interesting and a humorous ch chapter which dealt with the law of karma. So here we have some quotes which are handpicked, which you can, which can be helpful for your PRQ.
moving on with what type of question that can be asked in your in this particular chapter so here we have why did the writer say that he never he never had asparagus so this is how you are supposed to write the answer in 3 to 4 sentences or probably even more if it is relatable so we can talk about how he was uh, trying to spend his money thriftily yet he ended up saving nothing since uh, expensive dishes like salmon and caviar were ordered then asparagus was ordered and then uh, you can also talk about how because of falling short of money he had sacrificed his desire to eat the asparagus so this was not the reality that he never wanted to eat it it was an ironical statement all right then so now it's time to go ahead with some hand picked questions for you and that is what kind of an attitude does the writer's friend display what was the writer's reaction what was the writer's friend was the writer's friend right in saying that she um uh that uh, i never eat anything for luncheon or what is ionic in the line for luncheon in somerset moms the luncheon so this way in this manner you can ask questions when it comes to lunch moving on with another concept that was uh, a little bit out of the box that is world heritage which was completely based on how the unesco functions and safeguards all the cultural and natural heritage sites around the world so it was all about the functionality of the unesco how it works so how the world heritage list is created for us which in turn decides the seven wonders of the world every year there are some topics or important pointers which i have marked or highlighted in order to understand this concept easier that is the three types of world heritage sites that is cultural natural and mixed then we have how egypt inspired the world to come up with this uh, idea of safeguarding or preserving the world heritage sites by building the aswan high dam on the nile river then we have the important five steps which are involved in becoming the world heritage sites which are really very important the next thing that is important is to know that how the countries around the world are divided into five geographical zones the next pointer we should know is italy has the highest number of heritage sites that is 44 then we should know that there are 21 state parties that means 21 groups who have divided all the countries around the world amongst themselves and they look after them and the heritage sites belonging to the countries then we should know that which are the two advisory bodies who are um, about them and that is one is international council on monuments and sites and another one is the world conservation union so these are some important pointers which can be helpful to you when it comes to the world heritage site so i am sure that these pointers are going to be very helpful when it comes to creating your own personal notes for this chapter some more important pointers that i would like to highlight is the chronology of the events that you should not miss that is what happened from 1954 till 1972 and what was the role played by the subsidiaries of unesco and then we have these five steps which are really very important that is how the nomination process works how a particular heritage site is listed in the world heritage list so we have the first point that is tentative list then it goes to nomination file then the advisory bodies take into action and shortlist it then the world heritage committee once again shortlists uh, shortlists the entire list again and then 
the selected ones, the final list undergoes 10 selection criteria. So now it's time after understanding these concepts of World Heritage, it's time to move on to the another concept that is Old Man and the Sea, which is 4.5, which is completely based on a book review. Many of us are fond of reading novels and stories. Even I am one of them who loves to read adventure stories and Old Man and the Sea is one of them. In this story, we know that how a Cuban fisherman has struggled to live for 84 days in the sea without catching a fish. And on the 85th day, he finally, uh, you know, um, is able to catch a great marlin fish. But even after those 85 days of struggle, while he was hauling to the shore, he realizes that how it is difficult to maintain what we have owned. And that is, by the time he could reach home, the entire carcass was eaten by sharks. And by the time he could uh, reach or dock his ship on the shore, only the skeleton of the entire uh, marlin fish was left behind. But the brighter side is that how the villagers were completely awestruck by the kind of efforts that he has put in for 84 days, giving him back his lost respect. So in this chapter, Ernest Hemingway is, uh, has shared this, his story in a very creative manner, wherein every time you read the story, you're going to have a better perspective about it. Now, this was completely about the book review, wherein how the different types of uh, pointers are considered when it comes to writing any book review. That is the, um, the historical part, the social context, the plot, the personal view or opinion about the critics and so on. Now it's time to come back to our quote so here we have the quote and on the left hand side is the cover page of the old man in the sea, the book. Anyone who is willing to read this particular book must buy this. It's a must read book before you die. It's a very small book, barely hundred pages. So you can, uh, you will definitely enjoy reading such an amazing ad uh, adventure novel. Moving on with the kind of question that can be asked when it comes to old man and the sea. So we have compare the points that you used for a book review with the review of a play and write it in your notebook. Play, as we know, are dramas, isn't it? So here we have the book review as well as the review of a play. So it's time to go ahead with the next one that is, what if they ask you, the review mentions struggles of both Ernest Hemingway and the old man. So according to us, what are the similarities which are put in there? So this is how you can create the chart that is Ernest Hemingway and the old man. It is believed that uh, when Ernest Hemingway was writing this particular novel, it was all related to his own life, which was reflecting through an imaginary person that is the old man named Santiago. So I hope that till here, all the questions and the chapters are really helpful to you. And now it's time to go on with the next part that is once again, we have what type of question can be asked when it comes to this chapter, right? So give a brief answer about social or historical context of the book. That is the old man and the sea. So how are you supposed to write it? So 
So let's take a look. This novel is based on real events and draws heavily from his own life. Hemingway always talks about the need to struggle against defeat and death and how determination and struggle can help one to win in this fight as how he has fought against the blue marlin and he ended up winning the battle. The novel was published in 1952 when people were trying to recover from the mass destruction brought about by the two world wars and this tale of endurance and triumph strikes a chord with the readers. Because it was completely related to the effort, struggles and defeating the struggles with your determination, that was the phase where people were really struggling to come back to their original form, keeping behind what has happened. And that is the deaths and the loss of millions of people because of the world wars. So now it's time to go on to one of the handpicked personal response questions, which can help you to resolve a problem of personal response related to old man in the sea. And that is here. That is why is it difficult to lay our sympathies with either the old man or the Marlin? So I hope that when it comes to revision of the chapters or prose, you have understood each and everything and these concepts, these additional personal response questions or the quotes are going to be helpful to ensure that you add weightage to your marks. So now here we end with our part two and we are going to meet once again in part three, which deals with the poetry. So thank you once again and see you again in part three.